I moved to a whole new country and things are whew, different. Hi, I'm Rochelin, a Jamaican born content creator who recently moved to America and I'm just trying to figure it out. Like everything in life, there's good, there's bad, and somewhere in the middle. But let's talk about some key differences that I've identified since moving from Jamaica to America. If you're new here, let's bring you up to speed. Jamaica is an island that's nestled in the heart of the Caribbean Sea. She's located just 90 miles south of Cuba, 600 miles south of Florida, and covers an area of approximately 4,240 square miles or 10,990 square kilometers. To put that into perspective, Jamaica is roughly about the size of the state of Connecticut here in the US. So it's small. <laughs> It's an island, roughly 3 million people compared to America's 332 million population. That's big, right? <laughs> Jamaica is considered a developing nation, while America is considered a developed nation, along with countries such as the UK and Canada. So naturally, America in many cases is far more advanced than Jamaica is and probably will ever be. I must say that though Jamaica is small in size, in population, or even in the levels of economic, social, and industrial development, as Jamaicans, we like to think of ourselves as larger than life. We have this saying, we little but we talawa, which really means that we're small but our impact is huge. There are pockets of Jamaicans and Caribbean communities all across America, but you'll find the largest groupings in places like New York, or Florida. In New York, many of the Jamaicans and the Caribbean settled after being recruited by US firms in the early 1900s to help build the Panama Canal. And Florida also has a high concentration of Jamaicans and Caribbeans as well because many people initially came because of the high demand for labor in the US fruit harvesting industries. Approximately 60% of all Caribbean immigrants in the US live in these two areas. That's not to say that there aren't other Others in other places just like myself I moved to America but I am living outside of those two places I'm actually in North Carolina I enjoy North Carolina especially because of the similarities with my home country however with being in a new place with new environment new culture new people there are inevitably some differences they're not bad they're just different so now to my observations So since I relocated to America, I've had to rewire my brain. In America, people drive on the right side of the road. With most driving seats, they're on the left side of the vehicle. While in Jamaica, it's quite the opposite. People drive on the left side of the road with most of the driving seats on the right side of the vehicle. Of course, there are exceptions where from time to time you'll see a vehicle that's left-hand drive in Jamaica, but those cars are usually imported from America, while a great majority of cars in Jamaica are imported from Japan. I always wondered why some countries drive on the left while others drive on the right. Well, according to the Business Insider, the practice is believed to date all the way back to ancient Rome. Romans used to steer their carts and chariots with their left hand so that they could free up their right hand so that they could use the weapons to defend against enemy attack. This carried over into medieval Europe and in 1773 the British government introduced the General Highway Act where all the road users were expected to stay on the left not drive on the left because cars were not invented then but to stay on the left and then later in 1835 they made the Highway Act legal and the law of the land. Britain brought their driving styles to their respective British colonies. That's why many of the former British territories are among the few modern left-hand driving countries in the world and this includes Jamaica. 
if you aren't aware jamaica is still a british territory and still carry out a lot of the british rules that were imposed during the year 1655 to 1962 when jamaica finally became independent from britain to this day though jamaica remains a member of the british commonwealth with the british monarch as the head of state and she is represented by an appointed governor general so we're still under british laws even though we're independent from britain in short because the british drive on the left jamaica drives on the left and i want to say that driving rules are among many of the things that jamaica still observe since being ruled by the british the education system is also another and even the type of english that we speak in jamaica is the british english many of our english words while they are the same they're spelled very differently from how it's spelled in america so examples of this are like color flavor check labor neighbor odor diarrhea pediatrician center theater gray fiber liter airplane skeptical sulfur just to name a few so that's a fun fact <laughs> now back to driving in the u.s right hand traffic goes back to the 18th century freight wagons were pulled by teams of horses and the drivers rode on the left rear horse using their right hand to more easily control the team traffic shifted to the right so drivers could easily avoid collisions believe me when i tell you that it has definitely taken some mental adjustments to drive on the right side of the road in my early days sometimes i found myself constantly saying to myself stay on the right stay on the right stay on the right and make a turn in the right lane because i'm worried to think left so it was challenging at first and the thing is that it's my mom who taught me driving and during her teachings before i ever got around the steering she used to drill in my head that the rule of the road is that you should keep on the left unless intending to overtake or turn right so that kind of stick with me <laughs> and it's one of those things where you just do it you know but since coming here now i have to rewire my brain to stay on the right and to drive on the right and i think i'm now fully almost fully adjusted but let me know what you guys think if you're a jamaican or caribbean person that's living in the u.s what was that adjustment like for you and if you are you know from any country where it's different driving in on the road what is that adjustment for you comment below i'd love to hear your experience I mean, since we're on the topic of driving, another difference is the conditions of the roads. And this is no insult to my home country, Jamaica, or nothing, but the potholes in Jamaica, they are horrible. <laughs> horrible. <laughs> It's a bit of a relief to just be able to drive on the road without having to play hopscotch in the roads from potholes. It's been smooth sailing, pun intended. People, 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 this is Real King from Real King TV. You don't know, copy say, this is on Pandemore Road. Zip from down the road in a half a tree there, so. See that? The road collapsing. And I carry a drop in there, I'm proud of. What I've noticed is that whenever a pothole surfaces here in America, from my experience, because of weather or whatever it is, it is addressed almost immediately. So it was like it was never there. What's interesting is that I found this website that's dedicated to giving facts about potholes to help to inform and to justify reasons why potholes should be fixed. It's called potholes.info. You can look it up. And I wish Jamaica had studies and information like this to act on these as soon as they come up i know that roads are not cheap to maintain but it should be a priority where the money is found from wherever it needs to be found from to fix the roads according to the website i mentioned earlier america has recognized that roads are an integral part of daily lives and therefore it is necessary to maintain them studies have found that 24 million children which is one half of the nation's k-12 school population ride on 450,000 school buses 
for 180 days per year. 50,000 ambulances make 60 million trips a year. Trucks carry 32 million tons of goods across the roads every day and 240 million registered vehicles travel 2.9 trillion miles annually. Therefore, having proper road infrastructure is absolutely necessary. So studies like that, I love. But it's very interesting that they have this kind of stat to kind of inform their decision. And even without the stats, just common sense, you can tell that the roads need to be fixed. They're important. We traverse them every single day. And I wish that in Jamaica, more priority or more energy would be placed towards maintaining the roads what i also find cool is that here in america there there are apps that regular citizens can go on on the phone and can report potholes so that they can be addressed immediately i don't know how many people actually use it but it's available for use and again i know that this is a first world country so i'm expecting some of these advancements but because I know Jamaica is a third world or a developing country with first world mindset that these are some of the things that we need to look at to see how we can get there eventually. I know that the government of Jamaica has been doing work on the highways because I know the Maypen to Williamsfield Highway is set to open soon and I know they've done major roadworks in St. Thomas, that St. Thomas Portland region and that's all good and gravy and we're happy for that but I'm not just talking about the big highways i'm talking about the the little roads you know the smaller roads where you have to commute every single day those need a little bit of loving too but this is interesting to me to just see the differences again i'm only located in one part of america it may be different in other parts but for the places that i've been to so far it's relatively the same let me know what you think in the comment section below let me know what the road is like in the country where you're located and if you're in america the state that you're located and if you're in jamaica if you would like to see things like this being done in jamaica like i just want to hear your thoughts overall comment below we're still on the road <laughs> <laughs> and another difference I've noticed is that in some states here in America, you are allowed to turn right on the red unless there's a no turn on red sign posted. Again, that's only for some states. I'm in North Carolina, so it's applicable to this state. I know that in New York, for example, that is illegal. So don't go out there turning right on red and say that Rachelin told you. I didn't. <laughs> but here's the thing before I moved here and I came to visit, I didn't realize that making that right on the red was a legal thing. I'm so used to stopping when it's red, but these days people will honk at you if you're in the right lane and stop to observe the red light. I'm wired to just stop at the red light when there's a red light, you know? Since we drive on the left side in Jamaica, one would assume that you're allowed to make a left at the red light. And I've always heard this ever since I've been driving now for more than 10 years, but I have not found any evidence to support that. So I just stop when there's a red light in Jamaica. And now that I'm here in America, I go when there's a red light. Well, in North Carolina, that is. But it's such a shift to rewire your brain to think to go. Unless there's a sign to say, stop, don't do it, go. <laughs> <laughs> let me know your thoughts below what's that been like if you're located in any other states where you're allowed to go on the red light i'd love to hear your thoughts there's so many differences but we're just keeping it on the road for a little bit today but other difference is with the gas and not just gas prices, but actually how we get gas. In Jamaica, we are spoiled and blessed. <laughs> you pull up to the gas station and a pump attendant approaches you to put gas in your car. You do not need to get out. You just pay and have them pump the gas. Sometimes they'll even offer to wipe your windshield for you, the front and the back. Sometimes they'll even wipe off the headlights for you and they go crazy, which I love. Here in North Carolina, my experience has been quite the opposite. Every gas station that I've pulled into since I've been here, you have to get out and to pump the gas yourself. And I'm not saying anything is wrong with it. It's just different. 
I've heard of other places where there are pump attendants, but I have not been to anywhere where I see that happening. So I can only speak from my experience. I've always had to get out. I remember the first and probably the only time I went to the gas station by myself and I honestly did not know what to do. I've never used the pump by myself. <laughs> And I had to call for help. But just the fact that I had to just learn how to use that pump is like, wow, that's different. <laughs> I like that the pumps are digitized. Like you put your card in the card reader that's on the pump itself. And you specify what type of gas you want and the amount you want. And then while you wait for your car to be filled with gas, they have some kind of entertainment happening on the gas pump screen. So whether it's a video, sometimes it's music playing, you see a lot of numbers, all types of things. I'm like, yo, not bad. Not that I'm going to be, you know, using any other entertainment, but the fact that it's there, it may be helpful to someone. So I thought that was cool. And it makes it not such a daunting experience. Oh, and since we're on gas stations, let me mention that, you know, in many cases in Jamaica, when you pull up to the gas station and if you want to use the restroom, a lot of times there are signs or they'll tell you you're not allowed to use the restrooms unless you're buying something from the gas station. And I came here with that kind of thinking. So when I pull up to the gas station, if I need to use the bathroom, I'm like, oh, I need to actually buy something first in order to use the bathroom. And I had to, that's also another rewiring because you don't have to at least no one there's no sign there's no one standing behind you watching you and telling you anything you just go use your bathroom whether you purchase something or not and you're on your way so that's also been different for me since we're talking about gas stations another difference since being here in america is the self-checkout machines that are almost everywhere especially in places like supermarkets so back in college, I remember learning about this being a thing of the future, but it's crazy to move here and to actually have it being integrated in so many aspects of life. Supermarket these days have replaced cashiers with self-checkout machines that use artificial intelligence technology to analyze products, scan barcodes, cash items, and ultimately do what cashiers usually do, sometimes at a much faster pace. It's convenient convenient for situations where you'd rather not interact with people but not so great when it's costing people their jobs. Several businesses are for it as it reduces labor costs since there's no need for a cashier at every single register. One employee can easily monitor 6 to 10 self-service registers. On the negative side, since there are fewer employees monitoring self-service lanes, theft is a greater risk and i know you'll probably say there are cameras yes there are but there are also blind spots and if you're skillful enough the cameras may never see you i've seen so many videos online and i know that stores try to account for this by having cameras overlap each other but these thieves somehow find a way around it and it's crazy. Besides the high upfront cost and theft, the other con is with people just not knowing how to use the machines, especially our older and wiser of the population who'd rather deal with humans and do in-person contact and communication. So with them not knowing how to use the machines, they put wrong things in and then they have a lot of hardware malfunction and a lot of maintenance is required. I personally enjoy using the self-service machines in Walmart as I find it quite convenient to just cash and go but I'm also aware of the negative implications. In Jamaica we're not quite there as yet with that kind of technology. The closest thing I can think of is probably the kiosks in the airport and those are almost never working. I don't think we I can't think of where there is a situation for it and if I'm being honest I can't actually see it working effectively either because of just how our culture is but that's for a whole nother discussion I've seen the self-service checkout in like restaurants and different places like the other day I went to Texas Roadhouse and they had a self-service checkout machine just on the table where you're eating and that machine also had games for you to play while you wait on the food and then you can just check out everything from there tap your card and whatnot 
Well, it's definitely different from in Jamaica. In Jamaica, you go to the supermarket and you have a cashier. You go anywhere and there's someone. We're not quite there as yet, but to just see this widespread here in America, like almost everywhere you go, it's been interesting. Let me know what you guys think about the self-service machines, wherever you're located. What has your experience been with it? What do you think about it? And do you think that Jamaica will get there? <laughs> anytime soon listen i could go on for days about the differences but i'll discuss some more with you in another video as well as the similarities because there are many and i want you guys to understand that these points are not to bash any country or to praise any country it's really just to highlight the differences and the similarities from my perspective what i've noticed since i've been here i hope this was helpful for anyone that's looking to migrate to the u.s from whatever country you're in at least you know what to expect or for those that are here and to want to see what you know here the balance or what the difference is in jamaica or for anyone that just want information overall hope you really find this helpful let me know in the comment section below what are some of the differences with jamaica and the u.s from your perspective i'd love to hear it and if you're located in another country what are some of the differences that you've seen with the u.s and the country that you're in i love to hear all about it thank you guys for watching please to like this video of course leave a comment below hit that subscribe button if you haven't done so already and i'll see you in the next one Rushing, rushing, rushing with the vlogging. Rushing, rushing, rushing. A good thing, thing, DIY thing. Traveling, exploring, touring. I look at your thing, I look at teaching. I be a fun thing. Rushing, I'm boring. Like, share, comment, subscribe. subscribe. Watch every video member say she no hype. Like, share, comment, subscribe. subscribe. Watch every video member say she no hype. Hey, mm -hmm. it's Rushlin. Mm -hmm. Remember to like, mm -hmm. comment, share, and subscribe. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Cause she no boring. Mm -hmm.